Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much for the our speakers that have already spoken, Mr. Sheyi, Phillips, and Mr. Solomon. I've actually learned a lot from what they've said. So my topic for today is identifying cloud attack surface. Very interesting. So now, first of all, let's look at the definition of an attack surface. Let's look at the definition of an attack surface. <clears throat> Can you hear me, please? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me, please? I can hear you. Okay, okay, so, so I can go ahead, right? Yes, yes, you can. Okay, what is an attack surface? <clears throat> an attack surface simply means total number of all possible entry points for unauthorized access to an organization's corporate network. It also includes all vulnerabilities too. So when you look at this diagram, on the right side, you can see the organization network here. Then let's identify those entry points that have been connected to this organization network. Look at the cloud services. It's an entry point to an organization network. Look at the web services, especially those organizations that have internet facing applications. It's also what, an entry point to this organization. Look at plethora of devices like our, our laptops, our mobile phones, our tablets, which you use to perform office functions, is also was an entry point to this organizational network. Then let's look at the network nodes. These are nodes connected to your network, through other networks. They are also entry point to this organizational network. Now, we can clearly understand here now that the moment, the moment you leave the comfort of your corporate network to leverage on external services, the security limit widens, so as the risk increases. So we've identified key steps we are going to follow to identify this attack surface and address them. So now let's look at some types of attack surface we have. We have digital attack surface, like cloud services, applications, both on-premises applications and web applications too. Then code, the lines on our codes are also attack surface. System ports, then servers, then we look at the physical attack surface too. We have endpoint devices such as laptop, mobile devices, USB ports, desktop and system. Now let's move into the, the fourth slide now. Cloud services, a scent or a necessary evil. Wow, really interesting. It is no secret that organizations are beginning to leverage on cloud services, you know, to remove the burden of managing on-premises infrastructures. Now look at some of the benefits organizations are looking to gain as they move into the cloud. Flexibility, then scalability, cost effectiveness, better manage on-premises infrastructure. So when we look at this now, on the other perspective, is cloud services a necessary evil? Of course, you can argue that we can get compromised while we enjoy some of these benefits. So we need to address some of these challenges too. Despite wide adoption of cloud services, security remains a key concern to some of these cloud customers. So when you look at what you see here, you need to understand that you have to address these challenges, you understand? To ensure that you don't get compromised when you are enjoying some of these benefits that, that took you to the crowd. So the next step now is that let's look at some of the, let's look at some of the, some, some cyber attacks in recent times, just to buttress the point that cloud services is also a necessary evil, yeah. So when you look at some of the cyber attacks in recent times, you can see in 2018, Facebook, 50 million users' accounts compromised. It's on the rise as you watch, as you watch the, the, the projectile. In 2019, Capital One, 100 million records stolen containing personal and financial information. In 2020, Twitter, attackers swindled $121,000 in Bitcoin through nearly 300 transactions. In 2021, Saudi, Amaco, sensitive data on employees and technical specifications of the organization, exposed trade group Xerox demanding $50 million as ransom. Then in 2021, it's still on the rise. Kesanya ransomware attack, compromising up to 1,500 companies with a staggering ransom note of $70 million. So that buttress the point that secure and um, uh, buttress the point that um, um, cloud services is also a necessary evil. So we need to address some of the issues so that we don't get compromised. 
Now let's look at uh, let's look at uh, um, now before we delve into these steps to identify the attack surface, we need to the key concepts need to bear in mind. We need to apply zero trust security concept. In a zero trust security concept, what it means that we need to verify every component, everything that's going to be part of these cloud services. The who, who are these people that are going to be part of these cloud services? I mean, your cloud team, you need to identify them. The what, what components and resources are you moving to the cloud? Then the how, how are you going to verify the who's and the what? It's very important that we understand this. So now we move into the next step. The next step is that, now these are the key steps we need to take to identify cloud attack surface. First step is visibility. Second step is internal connectivity, then test configuration and external connectivity. Now, it is time, it is time to gain a holistic view of our cloud infrastructures as we dive deeper to identify some of these attack surface we just talked about. Now, identify cloud service providers. First of all, who are these service providers you want to leverage on? Who are they? You need to know them. Identify their locations. Where are their locations? Are they in the same location with you? Are they in different locations? Because you need to understand that. So you'll be able to know how your data is stored in those locations, how your data is secured, and also how your data is being processed. And on the other point, we need to understand the laws and regulation governing transporter data flow to ensure compliance. Because you don't want to be, you don't want to violate rules. Because as data is being moved from one location to another, there's a laws and regulation governing transporter data flow. So we need to understand that too. Then once you've done that, this is the second step under feasibility. But remember, it is difficult to gain 100% visibility as you plan to move into the cloud. But we can gain as much visibility as we can so that we really understand what we are going to do in the cloud. Let it be clear what you're going to do in the cloud. Does it address our business needs? You need to ask yourself that question because cloud is also an entry point to your corporate network. Then after we've identified their locations, deployment model, what kind of deployment model do you want to leverage? Is it public cloud where you want to be part of other plus customers? Is it private cloud? You want to own your own private cloud? Is it community cloud where you want to belong to a certain group that share the same security policy and the concerns? Or is it hybrid cloud? You need to be very clear. What you want in the cloud needs to be very clear to you. So you don't just move into the cloud because other organizations are moving into the cloud. You need to under identify what kind of deployment model you want. Is it going to address your business needs? It's very important to do that. Once you've done that, then the next step is service model. What kind of service model do you really want to leverage on? Is this software as a service? You want to host your data on the cloud? Or is it platform as a service? You want to host your application on the cloud? Or is it infrastructure as a service? You want to use the cloud infrastructures to perform your business functions. Then the final step is here is due diligence. You need to perform due diligence. What it means is that you need to do what? Identify, after you've identified these cloud service providers, demand for their security reports. I mean, you need that because you need to ascertain how much success have they recorded in terms of mitigating cloud security incidents. Because you don't want to get into the wrong cloud service provider because you're in for trouble. So you need to do this. That this visibility is very important because you need, it needs to be clear to you. What am I going to the cloud to do? You don't just move into the cloud because other organizations are moving into the cloud. Then the next step we're going to talk about is uh, internal connectivity. Internal connectivity is really very important that we address this. Now, identify those internal users that are going to be part of this cloud service. Your internal cloud team, who are they? Especially those users with privileged tasks. Because you know what it means when an attacker gets hold of private credentials. You know what it means, meaning that that attacker can do what? He can modify, he can disable, he can do what? He can bypass security control. I mean, it's going to be disastrous for the organization. So we need to identify these users. Constant training and awareness program is a continuous process. Introducing these users to the threat. Let them understand the threat methodology. You understand how these threat actors act. They need to know that. And most importantly, modify their behavior towards security. It's very important that we understand that. So identify those users is very key. Then the next step on that internal connectivity is identify internal devices. 
who are the, who identify those devices that are going to be part of these cloud services, especially those devices that will be performing privileged tasks, having them with security products. Because you don't take things for granted because cloud environment is a different ball game. It's a unique environment of its own. It's not the same with on-premises infrastructure. So you need to identify those devices. Now, BYOD, bring your own device. A lot of organizations have adopted this BYOD policy where they allow their employees to bring in their tablets and their mobile phones to perform office function. But reference 2021 Cyber Threat Defense Report published by Cyber Edge Group has identified BYOD as the major cause of war data breaches since organizations started adopting this policy. So organizations, they need to look at this, review this policy to address some of these concerns you just mentioned now. Then the next step on that internal connectivity is applications. Very interesting. This is another entry point to the organization network. Now, we need to understand what kind of application do you want to move to the cloud? Are you going to develop a new application? Or are you going to use an existing application to move to the cloud? Is this application, is it cloud compliant? These are the questions you ask yourself. Once you've identified what kind of application you want to move to the cloud, you'll be wary of some common vulnerabilities found in application. It's very important because application is also another major entry point to the organization corporate network. Now, one of the, the first vulnerability we're going to talk about here is poor input validation. A lot of applications are what? Are guilty of this first step. You need to ensure that client side input is validated. It's very important. Client side input is validated because it's an, it's an entry point to that application. Then broken authentication. A lot of applications don't secure authentication information of users. Meaning that users' credentials can be stolen by these attackers. And once they steal these credentials, they use it to what? Take over the account. And you know what it means to the organization. Then broken access control. A lot of applications don't adhere to the principles of least privilege. We've noticed it. You notice that a user have more resources, more access to resources than he required to perform his duty. So we need to look at this broken access, access control too. Then sensitive data exposure. A lot of applications don't use strong algorithm, encryption algorithm to do what? To secure sensitive data as they move from one location to another. So which can lead to what? Sensitive data exposure. You need to ensure that even when the data is at rest, when the data is in transit, and when the data is in process, strong encryption is required to ensure that this unauthorized personnel don't get hold of this sensitive data we are talking about. Then these are under the internal steps. Then let's look at, let's move to configuration. This is the third step to identify cloud attacks on surface. Configuration. Statistics have shown that 80% of cloud security incidents comes from the customers due to misconfiguration. So now look at the first step on that configuration, default configuration versus security needs. Of course, every cloud platform comes with a default configuration. But the big question here is, this default configuration, is it going to address your security needs? It's a big question. If yes, then you can go ahead, you're good to go. But if not, consider configuring your cloud platform to suit your needs. It's very important that we do that. But before we move into the configuration aspect, it's also a good security practice to perform what we call security categorization. What it means that you need to assign metric values to your security objectives to be able to identify which security objective is the most important to your organization. Every organization is unique. Some organization prioritize confidentiality, some organization prioritize integrity, some organization prioritize availability. So you need to understand which of these security objectives is the most important to this organization? That doesn't mean that the other two are not important. So during your configuration, you must configuration must align towards the security objective to ensure that that objective is achieved. Then after configuration, then the final step here, the final step here is uh, external connectivity. This is very important. External connectivity. Sorry. Under external connectivity, the first question is, will users access the cloud services through public network? Because this public network is an unsecured network. That is where these attackers reside, you understand? So if you have users that will be accessing these cloud services through public network, you need to do what? Constant security training and awareness program to keep them aware, to introduce them to this threat, to make them understand the threat methodology, how these threat actors act 
so that once they see one, they were able to what? To identify it. Then we device, devices connect to the cloud environment through public network. If you have devices that are going to be accessing these cloud services through public network, you need to harden these devices with security products. It's very important that we do that because that is where these attackers reside from, on secure network. The moment you are there, you are at the mercy of these attackers. So if you don't do the needful, you, you get compromised. There's no two ways about that. Then the final step is we external vendors, contractors, suppliers, access the cloud environment through the public network. Listen, this particular step is nice. One thing I noticed about this particular step that once you connect a third party to your corporate network, you've inherited what you call downstream liability, meaning that you are liable to any data breach that might occur as a result of third party connecting to your corporate network. You're not gonna say, oh no, it's not coming from me. Uh, I mean, our corporate network is tight. But you have third parties that are connected to your corporate network. So you have inherited what you call downstream liability. You are liable to anything that's going to happen as a result of those people being part of your network. Then because of that, you need to perform what you call third party risk assessment to manage risk through supply chain because supply chain attacks are on the rise now. It's very obvious. A lot of organization has been compromised through what, through what third party vendors. Then review and assess their security policies and documents. Is your right? No, you're not paying this third party, you are paying them for their services. They're not doing it, they're not doing you a favor. So demand for their security policies documents, of course. Assess their security control to ensure that if they meet the minimum security requirement, requires to be part of your corporate network. You need to do that, it's very important. Then finally, let's look at this. What remains to be seen now is whether all these entry points and preventive measures we just mentioned is enough, is sufficient to do what? To do what? To handle emerging threats and malicious actors. Is a big question. What if an attacker eventually finds his way into your corporate network? Because you can't continue leveraging on preventive measures all the while. You need to also leverage on detective tools, like just like my, the last speaker just said, endpoint detection and response tools are very important. In, the, in our everyday network now. Then your intrusion detection system is also very important so that you're able to detect any data breach when it occurs. Then network segmentation is also very important. It's a good security practice to do what? To logically segment your network because it will help to what? To contain attackers' lateral movements because attackers, they can move from one system. Once they compromise the system, they start jumping from one system to another, then from one network to another. So the moment you segment your network logically, you understand? You will be able to contain attackers' lateral movement. But remember, effective segmentation is not just dividing your network into smaller networks. It's how you control the flow of network traffic from one network segment to another. So it's very important that we leverage on this network segmentation while we plan to move into the cloud. Then BCP, your business continuity management, that is under BCP, BCM, will have business continuity plan and DRP. Meaning that you must have a BCP and a DRP plan on ground to be able to show resilience even when a data breach occurs. Because you don't want a situation whereby once your corporate network is compromised, the, the business is down. You don't want to hear that. So your BCP and your DRP plans must be on ground. So even if data breach occurs, if that organization, that business will show that resilience to continue operating while you're trying to address some of these issues. Then your DRP, your DRP plan will also help you to do what? To recover from those data breach as the business is moving. Then most importantly, user awareness. There's constant user awareness program to introduce users, to ensure that these users understand malicious activities. Once they notice any security event, they should be able to report before it turns to a security incident. So once users are aware, especially the non-technical users, once they are aware the way these malicious actors act, they should be able to detect some malicious activities and report to the appropriate authority before it becomes a security incident. Then finally, finally, remember this. Attackers are resilient and persistent. Once they need something for your corporate network, they must find a way around it. So it is highly unlikely you will prevent every data breach, but the resilience is key. Now, the last step is here. Someone may argue, why do I have to pass through all these steps? You understand? Since I have a cloud service provider with a highly robust security as one of the as part of their cloud services. The simple answer is this. You have the primary responsibility to secure your workload in the cloud. That is the truth. Because it's your, it's your workload. 
you need to do something to make sure that your workload is secure in the cloud while you enjoy some of those benefits we just mentioned earlier. So thank you very much. I have to stop here now. <laughs>